Michael Moranen. Hi guys, what would you what would you do if you had a puppy that has seizures at six weeks and you, the vet said we could only calm them by stroking him and only meds can't be given because he's still too young? I think the vet's right. So, you know, you don't talk about how long the seizures are for. I do have a video on how to deal with seizures. You can go look at that. Um, but uh, I think that you're limited on what you can do. And I mean, it depends on how serious and long the seizures are for. Um, you know, typically, um, Seizures typically, you know, show up by the time dogs are six months old, and those are treatable um, uh, with medication. But I don't know about a puppy that's that young, so I think you've, uh, I think you've got to go do some research. Now your revet is probably correct, and I'm sorry, I have problems. Uh, R. E. Innes. I hope you both are doing well. I've heard a few breeders mentioning pink bulldogs, but I can't find much info. I fear this color. Well, a little bit. We'll do a video on it, but I don't have anything else I can tell at the moment, so I'm not up on this yet. Um, Terry Horrocks. Thanks for your videos. I'm looking to buy a French bulldog in the UK. Watch your video watching explaining genetics. I'm struggling to understand it when a breeder says dog is 80-80. So let's see, this is what the dog is. The dog's 80-80, that is 10 points. The dog is KYKY, no brindle. It should show those 10 points very nicely. The dog is Big B, Little B. It'll have a copy of Testable Chocolate. The dog is both Little D, Little D, and Little C, Little C. That is a lilac. The dog is LL1. That dog is a fluffy carrier. So what you've got here is a 10-pointed lilac fluffy carrier that carries Testable Chocolate. No brindle. That, no brindle. Uh, it doesn't have a test. Yes, no pie. That's a, that's a nice dog. I don't know about the structure of the dog, but in terms of what it can make, it can make some it's great, great DNA. Make sure you do your homework before you buy. Yes. FaceTime. So you don't see whether you're in the UK, whether you're buying from the UK. So yeah, I've yeah. got videos on how to... Matter. FaceTime always. Facebook has FaceTime. There's a way to FaceTime. They want to sell a puppy to you. They're going to find a way to FaceTime you. I promise you. Yeah. If they want to sell a dog, that's right. Uh, if they if they're a scam, they won't have a way to FaceTime. Oh, yeah. If yeah. Better if safe if than return. sorry. Yeah. FaceTime, FaceTime, FaceTime. Christine Dominique Cortez, do we need a centrifuge uh, to sell chilled chill semen? No, I hardly, hardly ever. I mean, once every few years do I centrifuge chilled semen. The only time I ever centrifuge it is if the dog is urinating the salt. And then I centrifuge it very, very slowly, take off all the extra fluid and replace it with extender. So the answer is, if you collect correctly, which is what's called a sperm-rich fraction, and you don't keep on collecting after it's gone clear, you do not need to send a fusion. Okay, let me say something else about FaceTime. If someone tells you they cannot FaceTime, and you've tried to talk them into FaceTiming on Facebook, and, or it's their friend's phone, or their kid's phone, whatever, if they can't FaceTime you, walk away, turn around and walk away, because there's somebody else that has just as nice of a puppy for you somewhere else, and they will FaceTime. Uh, hi James, can you please talk about why they get kidney stones? I don't know, I mean, it's probably it's diet. Like humans, it's like humans, diet related is some of it, so you know, you might change diet. I mean, the other is, there's probably a genetic component to it too, so. Maybe uh, the water is yeah. way hard or something. Yeah, high I calcium water, I don't know. I don't I honestly don't know what causes kidney stones. I'll, if I find anything, I'll post some information on it. But uh, yeah. Um, Why do humans get? Lisa, no account. My mum used a feeding tube on a dope and she tend to have a lot of limbs. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't tube feed puppies unless they need to be tube fed. I want puppies to nurse off mum. I want puppies to be with mum. I want mum to look after her puppies. I don't want to have to step in. I think that's the best you can possibly do. But if you've got a puppy that's having problems, then it's got to get milk. And that either means you're going to have to supplement with a bottle if mum's milk's failed, or if the mum's not nursing anymore, you're going to have to tube feed. Susan Brocksmith. I answered a question about the most popular coming colours, and she said, no, what I meant was, Platinums are everywhere, fluffies and carries are all over the place, as well as lights and tans. Are we looking at Isabella's now and new shades? If so, what are the new shades? Uh, well, I mean, so so look, I mean, I think what's going on here is, is that Frenchies have become a very popular dog. And since COVID, there are a lot of people who bought Frenchies and now bred them and got puppies. So we have a huge influence.
loads of dogs on the market. Yeah. So what's going on is that people are trying to differentiate themselves by other people by having more and different exotic colours. Examples would be pinks, huskies, big ropes, hairless. Those are all things that are very, very recent. Very, and, very. And very unknown. Dollar signs are a lot. And very big dollars, very yeah. unknown. Yeah. Going a notch back from that, you've got new shades, which is an Isabella that also, it's an Isabella that carries cocoa. So we do have a really gorgeous boy who is a new shade. And I don't think he's, an, and, and so I, you know, he is used quite a bit. Goldfinger. Um, Goldfinger, right. Actually, Cody's renamed him as Top, Top, Top Shades, I think he's named him. Either way. Um, okay. but, but the answer is, is that, you know, we've always had this new stuff coming around. We know what's been tried and true. Blues, chocolates, tan pointed version of those, lilacs, murals, platinums. They're all, you know, the, the higher priced dogs and have been doing very well, although their prices are probably down by 30 to 50% from what they were a couple of years ago. But in terms of what these new colors are, I think the new shade is something very interesting. I just don't know about the pinks and the, certainly I'm not particularly interested in the fluffies. The pinks, I don't, I don't the pinks, from what I know, I know a little bit about the pinks and there's two versions oh, you of what- you mean you know a lot about the fluffies? It's no, the fluffies the pinks, are great. Yeah. The fluffies yeah. are great. So, yeah. So, you know, you, you, you know, it's, I can tell you this, the, whatever you do, the prices are down and you've got to differentiate yourself. And I did a whole video on this. And I think the way that you differentiate yourself is that you produce a quality, nice structured dog. Oh yes, structures are And you provide most. lots of support to your customers, not just to sell a dog, but through whatever they're doing with that you dog. that structure. So that if they're gonna breed, so these expensive dogs presumably are gonna be bred. And there's a lot of expertise that a lot of people don't have yet on how to get to, to point B, the point where they've got a successful litter of puppies. And that's something we spend a lot of time and effort. I like my French Bulldogs to represent and look like what a French Bulldog is supposed to look like. Even with the fluff on there, I want it to have that confirmation. You know, just because it's fluffy, you got to still have that confirmation to sit in. It just, it's just great when you've got both. Uh, the Wisdom family is wondering why mothers absorb puppies and could it be, why does it happen, will hot weather uh, cause it? No, I don't think Who so. Knows? I don't think so. No, I think we just don't know. I can tell you this, yeah. I would, the one it's thing I would be doing, yeah of course, the one thing I would be doing is I would be giving five milligrams of folic acid every day to a yeah. dog for pregnancy when you've done the AI to you well and it can help with these kind of problems. So, uh, it's happened to us. Yeah. But exactly how you fix this, I don't have an answer for you. And I think this is the last one. Uh, at the end, so we're talking about a video that I did a long, long time ago. At the end of the video, you stay, wait until the dog starts the first stage of labor to have a C-section, which is when there's a sharp decline in P4 is noted. So what is the value in testing daily levels to, to schedule a C-section? Well, I've got a slightly different position on this from what that video was because that was talking probably about using the target test and I, and I, just, I don't use the target test anymore any, anyway and I never thought the target test was particularly good at the, at the l lower ends of progesterone levels to predict uh, C-section. So my advice today is this, go look at my video that specifically says how to stop losing puppies, know what, learn what your vet doesn't know. Go look at that video. There's 30 minutes worth of great detail into exactly what you should be doing. But the simple and quick explanation of this is, is that the progesterone test only tells you when you're in the right place. Place. A progesterone test doesn't tell you how close you are. It doesn't matter what the number is. If it's less than, if it's higher than three, you don't take puppies. And if it's higher than three, you still don't know when puppies are due. So vets will do it and they'll do it, give you a progesterone test, say it's an H, just be ready in a day, rubbish. Yeah. They don't know, I promise you. Yeah. I've seen puppies, Tammy and I have seen puppies of our own that are 16 the night beforehand and their temperatures dropped and the next day they're at a two and a half. They go that rapidly. I've seen dogs that are at a 16 and they bounce around for days before they're ready. So the only thing that a progesterone test does for you is tell you that you're in the safe zone. Right, it does right. not predict. And remember, don't ever let a vet tell you 
oh, well, I'm going to be leaving this weekend, and so let's take the puppies on Thursday when you're really not due till Monday, you know, and don't do that. That's why you need plan A, plan B, and plan C. You need to have two or three vets that you can depend on that will be there on the days that you know was first breeding due date and I, last breeding That's exactly due date. right. I'm going to say this. But keep on screwing up because you come to us to buy incubators and our auction machines. <laughs> no, you don't so want to keep screwing up. I they get die these if calls. Taken I know. I, I too early. honestly, we are not huh. here. We are huh. here to to stop you from yeah. getting into this mess. Yeah. We have and, preached this over and over again about. And I mean, it's it's don't take them early. Almost every day Just that wait. I have a conversation with somebody Patience where they're about to do something. To those Yes. Something good comes to those. Well, so the way. yeah, and so we'll finish this video out. It's already 20 minutes long. But we're going to finish this video out on this talking about this. Is the problem is is that you know you go to the vet because you want to have expert advice and you want the best outcome for your yes for, for your, your whole litter for your mama, mama and, the babies, and the babies. Of course. And trouble, you. The trouble is educate yourself because I promise you on anything to do with the medical field. There is misinformation that is given out. It doesn't matter whether it's... Look, whenever I go to the dock to have something done, I have already Googled and found out what I think is going on so that I can see whether or not what I, information I'm being given is what I think is reasonable. people don't do that, James. Most people don't do that. They should do it. You should do it. That's why they keep on calling us. And That's it's why. like, read, yeah. Yeah. educate. But, but, but I promise you that the first thing that gets my bells ringing and my radar up is when somebody says they have a scheduled C-section. No, don't do that. It's scheduled C-section when you know what what was going on yesterday, that's fine. But a scheduled C-section that's a week in advance is a recipe for freaking disaster. Yeah. And they are never scheduled on a weekend. Uh -oh. But two-sevenths of all whelps should be on the weekend. Two-sevenths, because there's seven days in the week. And there's two weekend days. So remember that you can expect to have a, a, a C-section on the weekend 30% of the time. That's it. <laughs> Don't screw up, please. No. When you do screw up, call us and we'll get you set up with incubators and the $1,000 worth yeah. of crap that you need. Yeah, but remember, I've got two babies to sell, a little boy and little girl, fluffy carriers from Love My Boubile and Love My Paris. Uh, the little boy is a chocolate fawn. Carries blue, carries cream, and he's AT, and he's a fluffy carrier. Little bitty boy, and you talk about a beautiful color on him. He is gorgeous. He's got that nice chocolate little mask on his face, and he's cute as he can be. You're and as cute then, as you can be in those glasses. Then the little girl is a what she is is a chocolate and tan covered in cream, which makes her a champagne. So she carries blue, and she's AT-AT, and she is a fluffy carrier. So give me a call. They are five and a half weeks old, and uh, just call me, and I can give you some more information. 580-799-1910. And remember, Please if you're going to buy stuff from my of supply, buy it this week. Get 10% oh, yeah. off your entire order. Use the code FIREWORKS. Thanks for watching 23 minute video. I'm sorry we've gobbled up so much of your time, but it is what it is. See you folks, bye. Bye. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.